You may be seated. Let us listen for the gospel as it is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 22 through 45. And this starts kind of in the middle of the story when uh, Zechariah is visited. When Zechariah came out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service had ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I had endured among my people. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste, to a, a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. May God open our hearts to receive this joyous news this morning. So the Christmas story includes two women as major characters and that doesn't always happen in Bible stories. Today's scripture readings remind us that there would not have been Christmas or the birth of Jesus without the cooperation of Mary, his mother. The other significant woman in the Christmas story is Mary's cousin, Elizabeth. When Mary is visited by the angel Gabriel and told that she will bear the Messiah into the world, she is also informed of the astounding pregnancy of her older cousin, Elizabeth. Mary, in an awkward position, mysteriously pregnant, is relieved to learn that some, there's someone in whom she can confide. So she hurries to see her cousin. What was it about these two women that God chose them for such important and potentially scandalous roles in life? Was, 
I imagine that these women were grateful to God for each other's company during this time of great blessing and challenge. But it was awkward, I'm sure, for both of them. Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron, the brother of Moses, which gave her a great pedigree. Her husband, Zechariah, was a priest. Zechariah and Elizabeth had hoped for a child, but after many years, it was, it was apparent that they could not conceive. In ancient times, and generally up until the last century or so, babies were born, more babies, the more babies born, the better for a family. Offspring helped provide protection in daily life. And the more people in a clan, especially men, the safer everybody was. More children meant more mouths to feed, but also more workers to till the soil and herd the flocks. Children in the ancient world were put to work at early ages. Offspring also meant security in old age, because back then there was no pension and there were no full, full uh, service retirement communities. The only people one could count on were fa family members. So childless Zachariah and Elizabeth potentially were facing a bleak future. Then one day, Zachariah is serving in the temple alone, praying in the most sacred place in the temple where only the priests were allowed. He sees an angel standing near the altar, and he is terrified, which appears to be the normal reaction that people have to angels. As angels seem to do consistently, this angel tells him, don't be afraid that he and his wife will have a son with the spirit and power of the great prophet Elijah. Zechariah questions the angel, which doesn't sit well with Gabriel. This is a warning. If you are ever visited by an angel, don't argue. <laughs> you could get, end up tongue-tied like Zechariah. So Zechariah has this amazing visit with the angel, complete with instructions, and then he can't tell anybody about it because he cannot speak for the entire nine months of Elizabeth's pregnancy. I suppose in some marriages this could be an advantage, especially, <laughs> especially for the partner who still can verbalize. I wonder if Elizabeth sees the opportunity to talk his ear off. Soon he and Elizabeth learn that God isn't finished with the surprises in their family. Cousin Mary comes for a visit. From what we know, Mary was a young woman faithful enough to recognize an angel when she saw one. Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Now, from betrothal, a couple was legally married, but the man and woman lived separately with their parents, each of their parents, until the wedding. So Mary could have, Joseph could have divorced Mary because she appeared to be unfaithful. But they, ha they could have been betrothed also from childhood and known each other for a very long time. Still living in her parents' home, presumably, Mary was going about her daily routine when suddenly the angel Gabriel appeared and told her that she was favored. She was singled out for an amazing adventure and challenging assignment, the bearing of Christ, the Son of God, into the world. Now, over the years I've served as a pastor, many people have shared questions about their faith. Perhaps you have asked questions I have. How come some people receive special messages and assignments from God and others of us do not? How come I've, <clears throat> I've never seen an angel or heard the voice of God? Is it some lack of willingness on my part? What was it in Elizabeth and Mary that welcomed the presence of God and this new adventure in their lives? Elizabeth was considered old to be a mother. In a culture when women often became uh, wives shortly after puberty, Elizabeth was way beyond prime child 
childbearing age. On the other hand, when preparing for this sermon, I ran across a report from the Times of India that showed a photo of Daljinder Kar, age 70, holding the baby to whom she had just given birth. Sitting next to her was her 79-year-old husband. Everyone asked me to adopt the baby, but I never wanted to. I had faith in Almighty and knew I would bear my child one day, said the mother. This 70-year-old Indian woman became pregnant by in vitro fertilization, just to let you know. Nevertheless, carrying a baby and bearing it into life at age 70 is pretty impressive. In her longing for a child, through her prayers and supplications, Elizabeth had developed a close relationship with God, a centeredness, a willingness to wait, and a sensitivity to the nudging of the Holy Spirit. Mary's situation was quite different from that of Elizabeth, who had the security of being married many years. Mary hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord has come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ear, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. The scriptures record very little about Elizabeth, but she must have been a remarkable woman. She believed Gabriel when her husband did not. She raised a son, John the Baptist, who wasn't afraid to speak his mind, who prepared the way for the Messiah. Mary was a young woman and Elizabeth older. Both women were, had deep faith and Mary needed the encouragement that Elizabeth gave her. Mary responded with the song that we are now going to sing together. It's hymn 99. And after singing the hymn, I have a few more remarks. So don't think this is the end of the message. But let us, um, let us stand and sing together. Mary responded to God. Mary was open to God, and so was Elizabeth. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, she sang. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about, nine, for about three months and then returned to her home. And during this time together, they must have shared their fears, their hopes, their dreams for the children growing in their wombs. These two women of the Christmas story showed remarkable faith in God. They listened for God's guidance and opened themselves to the movement of God's spirit. They were willing to defy convention in responding to God's call. Mary was strengthened by her relationship with Elizabeth, who supported her amazing contribution of bearing the Savior of the world into the world. How are we opening ourselves to the movement of God's Spirit? It's a question that all of us can ask ourselves, especially this time of year, when the Spirit of God seems so available to us. How are we opening ourselves to God's Spirit, God's work in our lives? In what ways do we support and encourage one another, sharing our deepest experiences of God and encouraging mutual faith. As we gather with those we love over the next few days, may we be open to God's encouragement and God's love becoming incarnate within and among us. May we, in our interactions with one another, show the love 
and the faithfulness of God. Amen.